Okay. So, as y'all know, I've been working with uh, NAMI for quite some time now. And uh, I try to focus this e-newsletter on kind of, rather than, because they don't do a lot of things for, oh, buy here or donate here or this. It's more of advocacy, more of a sharing stories, kind of um, talking about what's wrong in the community and how it should be changed. So for this e-newsletter, I stuck with the, uh, the colors of NAMI. makes basically their, all their websites, because they have the regional ones, they have the national ones. I decided to stick with the yellow and the blue and maybe a little bit of the white theme on it. And um, this is, like I said, this is to kind of give information to the public about mental health awareness, anything that's related to it, news-wise, uh, nationwide, or, or regional, and uh, the, the events that they do, because those are the most, those are really important, because they'll go often, often they'll go out and do uh, free events at different places, big names that, that you'll recognize. And it's great just to, to know that they're not just I guess centered in a room in a building, and that's all they do. It's in this, they kind of go out to the um, community quite often, and uh, it's important to kind of give that information really quickly, rather than kind of just leading them on this huge story and kind of just leading them through different links and, and, and whatnot. So this is kind of how it is on the very top of the newsletter, and the ones that I chose to kind of really talk about is the blog, the report. Uh, kind of reporting something that's going on uh, that's going to be changing policy or something related to it uh, to promote a future event to uh, talk about a recent event and kind of just end it with a recognition of someone having, having a face not just words and, and praise and advocacy but actually have a face to the, uh, the local branch so at the very top I chose to start something with um, something related to news wise and this is actually going back to uh, to a lot of the news that's uh, mental illness and mental health has been getting recently. A lot of the shootings that have been going on over the last, I want to say, decade, everyone has been linking it directly to to mental illness. And and a lot of the people who have been committing the crimes are or have been affected by mental illness. But they're making a lot of the people that go out and nationally speak about it. They're making such a strong connection. The gun violence and mental illness and that's putting such a damper on the whole situation if you're trying to advocate to help and and what's really going on by sharing stories and everything but then you see a lot of these bad events that are happening and being directly core, uh, core, correlated to the mental illness community it's, it's kind of hard to keep advocating and keep wanting to keep it in a positive light so uh on this recent one uh, to, uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan was talking about the events at the uh, in California that just happened not too long ago, and he said that uh, specifically, like I said, it's relating it to, to uh, gun violence and everything. And an article posted on the Huffington Post was kind of talking about how he talked to the audience that uh, Congress is actually making, I guess, new headways and kind of revising old mental health policies because a lot of them are really outdated, and a lot of them. Uh, there isn't a lot of reinforcements or enforcement on these specific policies. So he's going out and he's saying that Congress right now is changing. And you hear a lot of talk about, oh, there needs to be change. Something needs to be changed with the laws for this. But he actually said there is actually a lot of people looking into it, how we're going to do it. So I put the link to the article that talks about the statistics, uh, the areas of what they're looking at and everything. So the... Um, the people that I'm really focusing for this story is anyone who's seeking information, anything that's uh, related to it. Because you hear so many stories all the time. So what are the big national stories that are related to a topic that I'm interested in? And um, one of the big things that I highlighted this one is changes are going to happen within five to ten years. Now it's kind of like on, this, it's on the fence. It could be very positive changes or it could be very negative ones. A negative connotation to what mental illness is or a positive light of we have to have this focus on this issue that really doesn't have a lot of people looking into it. And one of the hardest things to talk about for this one is, uh, like I said, there's a lot of talks on it. There's a lot of people saying there needs to be change, needs to be changed, but it never gets really specific to a certain policy or a certain law that needs to be changed or the ones that are outdated. So hard to find once again, to make it detailed enough so people know what's going on. The second one that I uh, talked about was an event that they had, that they had uh, just 
in November 18th. And uh, throughout, throughout the whole conversation I've had with NAMI, they've talked about how they wanted to be involved in this, and they did. They, they, they were involved in the whole connection. And this was a, a one-day on-site, on-service kind of thing. So people went to this uh, event, and they got the services they needed then and there, the numbers they needed, the people they, they needed to contact with. And this was a really great opportunity because 850 homeless and poverty-stricken in individuals showed up to the event. But one of the really cool things is they were hoping, and this is back in August and September, they were hoping that they can have some kind of emphasis on veterans. So it was really cool to see that um, they actually had a, an exceptional veterans village, like a certain area where they uh, help specifically veterans who are homeless or becoming in danger of being homeless. So this is a really awesome thing they actually did. And this is really important because this is a connection to the community. So they're not saying, oh, come to us and we can help you in our area. But they actually went out to this event where all these different organizations were there to help people and actually did all these really great things on that one day. So this is for people specifically who are volunteered for this because a lot of people did volunteer for this. And the Hope Connection um, website that I, I put a link in there just to uh, highlight that is they were looking for volunteers for this event. And they actually had over 100 Volunteers. Their goal was a certain number. I believe it was a 600, but they had way more than what they wanted. So that was really great to to see people even filling the spots that they weren't needed. But um, yeah, for anyone who needed this event or didn't even know about this event, but the fact that they have something that's on site on service is really great. And um, two goals for this one: it kind of lets people that know that there is a service site. That there, it isn't just oh, here's a pamphlet, read about our website, or there, here's a pamphlet read about what we do. It's actually, let's go here. What do you need? What do you need right now? Let's let's get that stuff right now. And um, yeah, once again, kind of going back to the, the fact that they made a, a special area, a, uh, an emphasis, I guess I could say, for veterans who need help. So the second one after that one, I kind of talked about, uh, just made a really quick blog, and I kind of went on for it. Didn't really show it. Couldn't really highlight the whole thing. But kind of... Uh, um, going into the idea of uh, a lot of people feel that they have a problem and it's only their problem. And I came up to this this uh, article that showed that recently uh, there's been a couple of football uh, players who are joining this, this nonprofit, it's Project 375. And um, it's really cool to see, I guess, athletes or celebrities talking about this issue that a lot of people are embarrassed to even talk about or mention it. So this article kind of talks about that I, I, that I, I figured out this, this place and uh, kind of talk about that it isn't just an issue that individuals have and they feel isolated on it. It kind of goes on along the lines of there's athletes and there's celebrities that have the same things, that they're going through the same things that I do and they go on to all these personal stories and you see these these athletes or celebrities on TV and you admire them because they have all these awesome things and they don't seem to have flaws. But it's really cool to see that they share the stories like, oh yeah, I was almost homeless for this. I almost lost my career. I lost my marriage. And to kind of see that there can be a, a turnaround from the, all of this. So the public that I'm kind of really focusing on, the audience, are the people who are still in that spot where they don't want to talk about it because they feel embarrassed or they have that fear for it. And kind of just highlighting them and saying, hey, there's there's people, not just, you know, down the street in the neighborhood or, or in this high school down in this one town that not a lot of people know about. Famous people that have the same problems that you're going through. And the, uh, the goals for this one, like I said, it's to kind of encourage, they have a similar problem to what I'm going through right now. And also to encourage the fact that uh, stand tall it's just like how these people are I mean these people are being shown on TV in front of millions of people stand proud as well yeah it's just to make it a personal story that's one of the biggest things that they use to make a personal connection to the people that are kind of volunteering or being a part of this upcoming events was the next portion and I kind of just made it a little little different background a little darker background so it kind of stands out to the back uh, the white ones that I've been having and this is just a really quick event. They really don't have anything planned for quite some time. This is the one that's the closest, the most relevant, I guess. And this is kind of going into the free gift wrapping. So this is kind of simple as a means of, it's not a lot of things going on, 
that oh my gosh that's mine please pretend it's not going off <laughs> there we go thank you anyways back to saying just don't interrupt me sir so this one is kind of really relevant and um it's kind of hard to say okay so what's the connection between free gift wrapping and barnes and noble in the in nami staff well this is really cool because they i've talked to them about it and what they want to do here is kind of have a, com a, a casual conversation so this is kind of uh to provide that the convenience of if I have a problem or if I think I have one or if I know someone who's dealing with something, I don't have to go to their facility or I don't really have to go out of my way and contact them via email or telephone or go to their facility. Uh, but saying, hey, I kind of need some presents wrapped. They're going to do a free event. Maybe I can stop by. They'll help me with my presents that I'll be working on for Christmas. And maybe I'll just throw a couple questions like, so uh, I heard you guys are NAMI staff. So uh, what is it that you really do? What can you do? You know, all these little casual conversation that they can have back and forth and that's really one of the main goals for this whole event at Barnes and Noble to kind of be there and help and and if anyone wants to talk about anything they can just go and have and have a really casual conversation about it and this is the hardest part for this one is kind of to incorporate it over the overall scheme of what they want to do and how they want to help and um, I had trouble to to kind of find a way to really see how this event can really impact a lot of people but I guess the biggest thing is just to make it convenient for people to kind of show up and just, if they have anything to ask. And if they don't, they, they really don't. But um, this just, like I said, just gives an opportunity. And one of the last things I kind of finished on is just kind of having a face. So I've been talking about a lot of, uh, of changes in the mental health community, uh, events, past events, how they've been helping. So this is one of the, the amazing people. This uh, I've been working for with her the whole time, and she had... She suffers from, uh, Professor Prater talked about it, there's this fear, this panic to go outside, to really, like, leave the house. She had someone there for, what was it, approximately 14 years that she stayed in her home because she couldn't go out because of this fear that she had. And after kind of just seeing what needed to be done, advocacy-wise, saying, oh, I have this fear, and it's it's not just that I'm scared of it, it's, it's an it's an almost agonizing fear she needed to talk about it she needed to uh, advocate for mental health uh, awareness so she actually is now the, the communication director she's the she's the main one kind of just focusing on what is it that we need to do let's go talk to so and so let's get let's get an event down here and throughout their facebook and, and twitter you have pictures and pictures of all these amazing events that she's been a part of and uh, this is kind of just for two parts. For inspiration means, as in having a face to someone who's really a part of this great uh, nonprofit, and as a way to say, stigma kills. So kind of just going back along that whole the stigma about it. And um, social media, I put at the very bottom the whole the links to it. The, uh, there's uh, the links to Twitter and to their Facebook, all the pictures that they post up, all the news and everything. And I didn't take a picture of it but they also have I put the whole like area their their phone number and all that good stuff so that's about it questions <laughs>